I think it's just like a wrapper, but shh. I'm about to do a live. Are you separating all the origami paper? What? I'm about to do a live. Hmm. Well, it might be they get the better take on project tomorrow. room. You can separate it there. It's fine, but okay. you just have to be quiet. You have to be very quiet. Yeah. Okay. If you don't mind. I took a picture of the bread you baked this morning and I showed it. <laughs> okay, hi you guys. Sorry, I'm not trying to ignore you. I have a domino game that's about to expire and I'm trying to make a move, but I don't have a good move. Oh. I can do a two six, but he has a double four. What if he's got the big six? I'm not giving up all those points. And I don't have anything else I can do worth doing. That's so frustrating. Okay, let me just set myself up to be able to do something later. Let me go so that I can see what's going on in the chat. Hi, you guys. So this is obviously going to be a live that is only suited for a certain group of people because everybody does not love books as much as I do. Um, however, Nikki Baby, that's what I'm calling her, uh, Nikki requested this video. And so it's gonna, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit sneezy. It's gonna have to be like a video series because I actually have a huge book collection. So I'm doing this bookshelf over here. And to be honest, I'm not gonna do all the books on the bookshelf. I have some on this side of me. You can probably kind of see there's some over here. They're on my table, they're on the floor. Um, I didn't take them all down just because it's way too many books. So for some of the series, I just brought out like three examples of like what's in the series of books uh, just for time's sake. So I hope that we can get through all of these. Um, and then I will do my cookbook shelf. I'll do my encyclopedia. Like there's a whole set of encyclopedia on this bookshelf too that I didn't take down y'all. I just couldn't do it. Um, their world book, <laughs> that's gonna have to be good enough. Um, and there's a whole bunch of like American heritage books and some other ones. And I just could not like war journal books and I just couldn't be bothered to take them all down. So with that said, hi Maximum. I'm going to just get into my book collection. So if you are a bibliophile like me, you may enjoy this if you like antiquarian books then you may enjoy this because I have a little bit of both. This is kind of my hodgepodge shelf, like my throwaway shelf. It has a lot of my private books on it. There's one book, I don't quite understand how it ended up on this shelf, but it's there. Um, so let's just get into it. This is not the order that the books were on the shelf. It's just the order that I stacked them on my couch. So it's not about, you know, what are you doing? Oh, uh, okay. Apparently my daughter has a book from that shelf. <laughs> she has To Kill a Mockingbird. She's insisted on bringing it. So thank you. <laughs> All right, so let's get into it. Um, let's look at nature books. We have a lot of nature books because you have to remember, hi, Blueberry Sky Gang. Um, rec train. Yes, I do have a PayPal. Uh, oh my gosh. Why are you asking me trick questions here? Hold on. I will put my links one time in the chat. Um, oh no, you know what? I think 
Okay, maybe not. I don't know. You guys are asking me trick questions. I cannot. With the trick questions. Um, hi, Rec Train. Hi, Lando. I'm gonna go through my um I'm gonna go through my bookshelf. That's what I'm up to. I hate when I'm super close to the camera. It's kind of crazy when I'm very close. Hold on. Oh, it's on my page. So yeah, if you guys are interested in my Patreon information or anything like that, it's in the comment section of this video. Great, that means I don't have to type. I'm for not typing. So uh, let's just get into it. Hi, Suzanne. So, um, books, 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 books. I love them. We're gonna look at them. This one is Wild Animals of North America. This is a beautiful book. You will see that I have almost no uh, paperback books. Uh, I love this one because look at the embossed bear on the front. Really beautiful, has some great pictures. This is a older book and it's a good book for my daughters to use for studies because I homeschool. I have a lot of books that I just keep around for the purposes of research. So this is one of those books and these just cover the animals that we have here in North America. Book one. Oh my goodness, I think I'm gonna get trapped if I start stacking books over there. I'm fine, Dwayne. <laughs> okay, so um, next I have Exploring Our Living Planet. And this is a really good book that goes into uh, evolutionary theory, essentially. And so obviously, even though I'm Christian, I do teach my girls evolutionary theory because it is important that they learn um, that theory because a lot of people believe in it. Um, it also just has some interesting um, facts on the earth itself. We know a lot of those facts are not real facts because we've not actually been to the center of the earth. We don't know, we've only gone so far down, but it is a fascinating book and it is an important book to have because it uh, touches on a lot of modern science. So we have that. Again, we have a lot of books for research purposes. Most of my books are research books. How did I lose my connection? I only like picture books. No, these um, are not picture books. Uh, these books have words and photographs in them. So they do have words. See all those words? So they're not picture books. The same thing with uh, Animals of North America. There are photographs, but they're word heavy books. So um, yeah, this is Living in Japan. Uh, this deals with uh, ancient to modern Japanese living. And as you know, I have a child that currently lives in Japan. So this book was immensely useful to him and it is part of our collection. Um, again, this bookshelf is my hodgepodge bookshelf. So it's totally not themed. Here we go with the complete book of sewing. We know whose book this is. It is a sewing book. It has um, all that you need to know. It has dress patterns in it. It has tutorials about like how to do sleeves. That's my personal Achilles heel are the sleeves of things. Um, just all the information you need to know about fabrics, all of that, very girly, but yeah. I love to sew and so yeah, one day maybe I'll do for the ladies if they're interested like a sewing, like all the fabrics I have or all the sewing machines I have or you know, stuff like that. I, I know you guys won't like it, but the ladies might like it. How do you send your kids to Japan? 
Okay, is that a real question? So, oh, my husband's bookshelf? Yes. His bookshelf is over there. It's going to be the last one I do because he has a lot of books shockingly on that bookshelf. Like they're literally stacked on the top of the bookshelf all the way up to the ceiling. And I think you guys will find his bookshelf very interesting. Like I said, his bookshelf is basically probably 100% black authors about black people, mostly black men and black boys, because that's his passion. He's a black male advocate um, and activist. So yeah. His shelf will be last though. <laughs> we'll go through my bookshelves and then we'll do his bookshelf last. I was telling him, I was telling you guys about his bookshelf. I was like, I told him your bookshelf is all black authors about black topics, all the blackity black time. <laughs> um, so how do you send your kids to Japan? So a really easy way if your child is intelligent is the Japanese government actually offers a full ride scholarship um, to Japan. And you just have to go to your local Japanese consulate and you can apply for that scholarship. You will have to test in. Um, but word to the wise, my son, who's multilingual and highly intelligent, did not make the cut and he tested twice. But it is highly competitive. I will say in his defense or in defense of other children that want to go for it, he didn't want to study in mathematics. Um, he wanted to focus on Japanese and because he was going there for languages, he only had to take the Japanese and the math test. But because this is a global test and we know that Asian countries are heavy, heavy on mathematics, he was not competitive enough in the field of mathematics. And I think honestly, that's why he didn't get um, the scholarship. So if you want your child to go to Japan, that is an excellent opportunity. They just have to study hard and they have to be ready for that test. A lot of American citizens won't apply, so your child will stand a good chance, but they have to be math heavy. So if you have a math heavy child, that is how your child can go to Japan free of charge, all expenses paid, including living expenses. So, um, the next book I have is I Dream a World, Portraits of Black Women Who Changed America. And I don't know if you guys have ever seen this book. It is a hardback, but I still have it in its paper cover. Um, love this book. It's a beautiful book. And I love the photographs in here because for each woman represented, there is like a photograph. I feel like a kindergarten teacher, children. Check out my book. This is how I read when I read to like a group of children because they have to see the pictures. Have you ever read to several children? You're like, do you see that? Do you see that? You guys will have a hard time seeing it because of the glare, but all of the portraits are in black and white. And it's just, yes, she's blackish. So yeah. I Dream a World, Portraits of Black Women Who Changed America. This is our next book. Like I said, the books are all mixed up because I just carried them over here as best as I could. I wanted to do it at the bookshelf, but because of the lighting from my window, like it just wasn't even a possibility. It was not gonna happen. Hi, Derek. Can you get a book with only words? You will be getting books with only words, but you gotta be patient, okay? It's a big bookshelf. Most of our books only have words. <laughs> no, no, so you don't have to, so yes. Um, the test that my son wants to take that will be officially like, he'll be fluent in Japanese, that test is hard. The test that you need to take to go to Japan most students don't have to test for that and it doesn't they don't have to be fluent so for the scholarship you don't need to be fluent in japanese you don't have to speak japanese at all it was just because he was going for languages that he had to take the japanese test so don't be discouraged by that like it's still possible for your child to apply for that scholarship it's still totally possible just contact your japanese consulate so there's a japanese consulate for every area and you need to figure out which one is for your region and then they can give you the details. But I would say get your kid if you're serious about this, you know, because it's like their life and that's an excellent opportunity. 
um, get your child to start studying early, you know, like a year or two or even three ahead, like, you know, make them care. Did you do a book tour? That's cool, Derek. Oh, did he? Yeah, it's a different test. So uh, this book is called The Forest and it's about the forest. Strangely, although it's about the forest, there are very few pictures of the forest in here. Well, there's one right here, but for the most part, it's just very word heavy about the forest. So again, lots of research books because I homeschool, so that's why. This one is called America the Beautiful. And it goes through uh, commonly known and lesser known places. So the Smoky Mountains is in here. The River of Grass is in here. The Delta Country in Louisiana is in here. Um, Carlsbad Caverns National Park. Um, these are just, a, this just contains a wealth of information about many of the natural habitats that we have here in the States and uh, sites that we have. This is really, really good for advanced uh, testing. It's also just good to know. I think very few people know much about what is here just in our own country. Never mind anybody else's. Oh, we have a book on elephants because elephants are cute. Um, and because somebody might need to do a report on an elephant. When you're homeschooling, you never know what somebody's gonna need to do a report on. Uh, this one is Mummies of the Pharaohs, Exploring the Valley of the Kings. And so this book is pretty much all about mummies. No, this book is pretty much all about mummies. The girls cannot resist talking to me. Like, it's all that they can do. Um, this book is on Switzerland. It has maps, uh, sites. The book is written in one, two, three, four, five, six languages. So yeah, this book is written in six languages. So every page is translated into six separate languages, which is awesome. Uh, one of those languages is Japanese. Uh, yeah, I think my son speaks maybe three of these six languages because I only recognize three of them. Yeah, so this is very cool. Books that come in multiple languages, I think are very, very cool. And we have several of them here in the house. Um, I think I said I had six bookshelves. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have more but my other bookshelves sadly are in the garage and I literally have books in the garage too. So this will not even, as we do this series, it's not gonna be like all the books. It's just gonna be the books we could fit in this house. Dwayne Bryant, no, there's still a lot of beautiful natural spaces in America. There really are, y'all. Don't say that. Why does my stuff keep falling out? My, I don't understand that. Okay, anyway, this book is on Russia. It is called Russia. This is an older book, but that is okay because it just has historical Russian facts in it. And so um, the information itself is still current because it's all historical Russia that it's speaking of. Um, then we have our big Bible, our giant Bible. This book talks about God, <laughs> for those of you who weren't aware. Um, we have the Rand McNally World Guide. I have a social register in here. I don't know if you guys know what that is or if any of you have ever had one in your house, but it's a register of all of the um, blue bloods and wealthy people 
um, that's a useful book to have. When somebody's like, so so who's the enemy? Who, who are the bosses? Get yourself a good social register and you'll find out. That is what I'll say. Marsha Ambrosia, your hands, what do you mean? What's wrong with them? What's wrong with my hands? I don't understand. So let's take a look inside of here. It's exactly what it says. Um, it's kind of like a mini encyclopedia. If you were traveling and you didn't mind carrying something really heavy, I wouldn't. This would be very useful to you. But it's also very useful just for reading and learning for little ones. Um, here we have The Hidden World of Wildlife. Again, it's another wildlife book. It has some of the most beautiful photographs in it. This is actually basically a, a photograph book. Um, I'm not going to show this leopard eating because he's got him by the throat. Oh, look at the frog. How cute is that? I don't know why I'm holding it there because you guys aren't there. But you can literally like see inside of the frog eggs. You can see the little um, developing tadpoles. And this is a lovely book. I love this. So these are really great. Again, research books, if you homeschool, you can never have enough of these books. This one is Dolphins, Quails, and Porpoises. Yes, if you guys thought that I was joking when I said this was going to be go through my book collection with me, you underestimated my ability to sit here and really go through these books. I'm thoroughly enjoying this. You were in the Smoky Mountains recently? Oh, you didn't take pictures? Well, yeah. Well, if you're having a hard time keeping your five-year-old's attention, 77, then maybe he's a kinesthetic learner. It may not be that um, his attention can't be kept. It may be that you need to try a different teaching style with him. So see what styles work. See if he's a visual learner, if he's a kinesthetic learner, which means he's gonna need activity-based learning. A lot of little ones that age, they need activity-based learning. They can't just sit there, you know, and just listen to you talk and explain things. So tangibles and things like that are really beneficial. Do you miss books with pictures? You watch the science channel, get a science book. Afro, why do you come here? Why do you come here and, and tempt me to um, just kick you off my channel? I'm just gonna kick you off my channel because I can't with it. I can't with you irritating me and being just inflammatory for no reason. So yes, dolphins, whales, and porpoises. Now what's too bad is that I think Nikki is working right now, but she can watch this on the playback because this was her requested video. So this one is insect magic and it just goes through various kinds of insects. It also has some really beautiful pictures. I love that it has close-up pictures so that when you're describing like how insects have feet that have little hairs and things like that, it gets really, really close and into that. So um, yeah, I really, really love this book. And it's interesting because it shows like how we perceive the butterfly wing and then it shows an enhanced version where you can see the little tiny hairs that are on it. And I don't know if you guys know this about butterfly wings, but if you touch them, the butterfly can't fly anymore. Have you ever touched a butterfly and then like the little powder? Oh wow, I'm getting stuff all over me. The little powder like gets all over your hands. Yeah, real talk. 
it's a sad, sad thing. And then the butterfly can't fly anymore. Oh, okay. Now these are the books, some of the books I said I would not be bringing all of them because it would just be ridiculous. Um, but these, remember, I collect um, antiquarian books. So these are American heritage books and I have tons of them, like tons of them. And they go through historical facts about America. And if you're ever looking for like old pictures uh, it could be pictures of slavery. It could be pictures of civil rights. It could just be pictures of events that happened in America. The American Heritage books are great because as you see, they have all of the original photographs. They have uh, clips from uh, newspapers in here, like old newspaper clippings. And those are things you normally have to go to the library for. And... Um, go through like film for and stuff like that. So uh, when I saw these, I grabbed them up very quickly because um, I recognize the value in that. So you know how they used to do, we still, I guess, do them now because every once in a while I do see them uh, like, uh, spoofs of presidents and things like that. Look about this income tax and how it grew and grew and grew and grew. This is crazy. You would never see this now. And this is like the IRS and everybody's like marching into it. He's like, they're not marching in. He's like harvesting all the people. So, um, yeah, these are really great. And then it just goes on to, because again, they're coming from a perspective of before there was income tax. I know when I did my social security video, people were like, oh, well, you know, what a horrible person you are. You're trying to get people out of paying income tax. And I'm like, you do realize that people just started paying income tax, right? Like our country wasn't built on taxing people's incomes. Like that's not how we afforded things. We tax businesses. Um, but a lot of people don't know that. So get yourself a series of American heritage books. So, um, yes, these are great because a lot of those clips, a lot of people right now search, search online for that, right? If you're looking for old pictures, old news articles, um, things like that. Well, in our house, we have them here. We just have them in book form. So they're sort of immortalized and nobody can take them away. You know, I feel like things online always scare me because I feel like, you can always go and delete and change it. It's like being in 1984, which is a book I don't have in my house, but I suppose I could add it to our collection. So let's see, I'm checking out your comments. If you're not selling butterfly powder, you haven't read books for fun in so long, but that's fine, right? I used to, I went through a period of my life where I read um, Stephen King novels, like the Dark Tower series, I love it. I went through you know, a period of my life where I just read books for entertainment. Um, and now I'm in a period of my life where I love reference books. Just absolutely, I love reference books. I'm about to show you the oldest book in my collection some of the older books in my collection in just a second, but I have a book that is like 220 years old. No, I take that back. I think it's 250 years old. I'll have to open it up and look inside of it very carefully. Hi, Water Lily. How did that stream end? Did it end pretty cool? I had to leave. I was almost 10 minutes late for, oh, I think I probably was 10 minutes late for this stream because I was listening to Gab's. Yes, by Orwell. Yes, I'm telling you, Stephen King is a brilliant writer. And I don't know if I told you guys this about myself, but I am a writer. Actually, I wrote a play at the age of 14 that went to stage. I'm also an artist. So when I was 13, I was fe featured in um, the newspaper for some uh, mache masks that I made. And so um, I am an artist. A lot of people don't know this about me. 
actually I was like thinking, what should I do with my Patreon page? And so finally yesterday I started to upload stuff to my Patreon page and you know, I was inspired and I did like a short, like uh, it would essentially be like a spoken word poem. Um, and so, yeah, so I love to write and I respect writers and Stephen King is brilliant in how he writes. Like he is capable of painting a picture like no other. Um, he has this book, he has this short story called The Lawnmower Man. Y'all read it, it will freak you out. Where And he just paints this picture because the lady doesn't hear him mowing the lawn in the backyard and she goes back there and he's naked and he's fat and he's spitting and he's covered in sweat and, and he's like out there with green slobbery stuff all over him and he's eating the grass, butt naked, fat as roly poly. And he sees her and he comes after her and you know how Stephen King gets. Then it just all goes south. Or he has one about a guy that wanted to quit smoking and um, he couldn't quit smoking. So he went to some place where they guaranteed that he would quit smoking. And they were like, they kidnapped like his wife and kid. And then they put his baby in a shock room like they do with bunny rabbits and was like, electroshocking his baby to get him to quit smoking <laughs> like it was crazy like Stephen King his mind is like and he says the Dark Tower series was his masterpiece and while I did enjoy it I don't know like I guess it's for him to say what he feels his most profound piece of work was um, but I did enjoy the Dark Tower series it was fascinating one of the heroines is a black woman in the Dark Tower series I have not seen Equilibrium, uh, but I do like 1984. I think what is interesting about 1984 and um, Brave New World is they're kind of like Star Trek to me, where they purposely share tidbits of the future with you to get your mind acclimated to the idea of the future. So yeah. Hi, Mark. How are you? Mark is actually one of my patrons. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it, Mark. Panther Knowledge, hi. Oh, was it great? That's awesome, Water Lily. Well, you know what, Water Lily? That's fine too. Do you know what I mean? Like art, when you're an artist, it's not about like when you have a talent, it just wants to be used, right? It doesn't have to be anything other than you doing it. And so I hope that you still do art in your spare time. I know I used to write so much, I still have like a writer's callus on my finger. Um, but I think what's important is that you just write, that you just write. And every once in a while, I uh, collab with a group of writers that just focus simply on web content. And it's boring, but it's easy. Um, and I do like editing or prepping like of the articles just to like flex my thumb. Do you know what I mean? Just to flex it. The Twilight Zone, yeah, the Twilight Zone is pretty good. The old ones are really good too. The Cat's Eye, what's that? Animal Farm is another good book. Okay, so um, these are all, so I have a lot of these. I just pulled out three because I didn't think I needed to pull out all of them because you'll get the idea. Um, these are the Quarterly Journal of Military History. These are really useful, especially if you homeschool or, you know, what I always worry about is that information changes and digital information can be changed. So this goes through every war that we had. Um, these books go into great detail about the wars. Again, they give pictures, a lot of pictures that you won't find anymore, um, especially the gory ones because nobody wants you to see those. Um, literally here, it actually has a photograph of a confidential letter from British Prime Minister Winston Churchill. So I don't know, you guys can't see it, but it's like right here. So it's just great to have, like, you know, you can't access this kind of stuff anymore. You have to go through so much. You have to find like a good library. You have to hope that it's somewhere online and you can take it. 
it's so for me these kind of things that you can have that information in are are wonderful because these are the kind of things that are very hard to find these days um i know san francisco has a great library where their uh, photo film like library is huge but everybody doesn't have access to that uh this is to kill a mockingbird uh, this is an older version of the book, and I love it because, okay, this is where you guys know that I'm a weird person, right? The, 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 I can't show it to you, I don't think, but the, um, it has an embossed tree on the front, which I love to touch, and the pages are kind of fuzzy because it's an older book, so the paper that it's made out of is like a really soft kind of paper. Um, I don't know. So this is a very, it's not just, it's so soft. It's like a uh, velour. That's what it feels like. It's like velour, not quite velvety, but like velour and like a deep pile velour at that. And so, yeah. So when I said I was a bibliophile, we know that I'm officially <laughs> the leader of the bibliophile committee. Um, I didn't get these off Amazon. I go searching for books. So I find remote bookstores and things like that. And I go like on deep searches for books. So yeah, I didn't get them off Amazon. I The only books I get off Amazon are school books for my kids, the textbooks. But for these kind of books, I all of these I acquired in person. <laughs> so... I haven't read Lord of the Rings. Yeah, Water Lily. I love older books too. I, I really do. I love everything about them. So this is a book that um, my pastor's wife gave me. It's called The Bible Promises Book. It's a really cute book. Um, it's one of my paperback books. And it goes through all of the promises in the Bible. So it's called The King James Version. The Bible Promises book, 1,000 Promises from God's Word. And so I really love this. I had several copies of this. I gave one to my secret sister. Um, this one was given to me. And so I love this book. Oh, here goes. So I used to be obsessed with Danielle Steele. And somehow one of her books, even though I don't read these anymore, has made it here. They're just romance novels. There's no nothing you know, weird or sexual in them or anything like that. Um, they're just cute little stories and I used to love them and somehow I still have a book here from that. It's so weird because are you guys, is it timing out for you guys? It keeps timing out for me. Okay, this one is the Sonnets of William Shakespeare. You're gonna wonder why is this book devastated right here? but it has a reason. I'm gonna send you to your room. <laughs> but it has a reason. My daughter loves books too. It's hard for her to resist this. Um, so these are the sonnets of William Shakespeare and it is an older book and that's what's in it. It's got Shakespeare sonnets in it. Uh, this is a Sabbath and festival prayer book. So it has in English and in Hebrew, um, so the English is on this side and the Hebrew, oh, the Hebrew is on this side. And this book has been through the ringer. When I found it, it was pretty battered. Um, I just, I love, I love old books though. I didn't care that it was battered. So yeah. And the pages are like butterflies wings. They're really, really light, not like Bible pages. They're a little bit thicker, but, um, Basically, these are Psalms from the Bible, right? So like this one says, I will praise the Lord as long as I live. Oh, I actually know a song that says this. I will sing praise to my God while I have my breath. Let my meditation be sweet to him. Isn't that bad? I will be glad in the Lord. I actually know that psalm as a song. I know a lot of Bible scriptures as songs because there's this woman who does like 
new King James versions of songs, but she does them really, really well. Like I promise you, she can sing like anything, anything at all. You know, I can't sing when people are staring at me. So my whole head started to get hot, y'all, I promise you. Once I started realizing that I was singing and that you guys could see me, my eyeballs started to get hot and then I got nervous and scared. So there you go. And then I started not being able to do it anymore. But the, the thing was like in my mind, Shakespeare, meh. I don't like Shakespeare. I have it because it's Shakespeare, not because of my present, you know, like my interest in Shakespeare, because I'm not particularly fond of Shakespeare personally. This one is The Forced Saga. Okay, this is a good book, y'all. This is a good book. Um, I want a first edition of Tess of the Dubervilles. It's expensive, but if any of you guys are feeling giving in my, in my birthday month and you want to give me Tess of the Dubervilles, uh, a first edition, there are misprints in it. I actually found one, but he wanted too much money for it. I found one in San Francisco at an antique book dealer, and we went for a private showing, and he just wanted too much money for that book, and I couldn't do it. And the author, he had signed in the book how he hates first edition copies because they're always... Uh, uh, there are always things wrong with them. Another one that I want is um, House of Mirth. But this is the fourth saga, and it's a pretty interesting book. Um, this one is Bond Woman's Narrative. I don't know if this was ever authenticated. This is the first edition of Bond Woman's Narrative. Um, so this is supposed to be the stories of a slave supposedly it is the stories of a slave and um if it is authenticated it will be one of the only if not the only i don't know if they found more but when i first got the original first edition i had so there's a story behind this book i was in uh i will that'll give away my age well i was doing something and i heard on public radio that a manuscript had been found that was believed to have been written by an actual slave, an educated slave about slavery. Um, and that it was rare or, or that nothing, I think at the time they said they had nothing that was written by slaves, like something that was just completely written by a slave themselves. Um, and so the, the transcript or the manuscript had not been authenticated. So I ran out and I bought the book. And then somewhere along in life, I lost the book. So I searched and I searched and I found a bookstore that had the book in a first edition. And then I've never bothered to follow up to see if it had been authenticated or not. But the woman that tells this story um, is uh, supposedly a slave, right? And she is, I believe, mulatto. And she tells a story, um, it's, it tells a story of just um, being that type of slave. And she goes into the stories of some other women, other slave women and things like that. So The Bond Woman's Narrative by Hannah Crafts. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. No. <laughs> All right. So I also have, uh, the Delaney sisters having our say, the first 100 years, old women, and they told their story. And so we have the book. Oh, okay. That's cool, Mark. Oh, that's so funny, Mr. Mr. Really? I can't imagine reading 100 pages of just a Shakespeare book. Oh, it is tedious. I don't find Shakespeare brilliant. Hi, Virtuous One. Okay, Virtuous One. Yeah, if you like books, this is interesting. Like, I know everybody can't get on with this, but I love books, obviously, because I have a lot of books. So I can get on with this. What I think will be fun are the cooking books, y'all, because I like to eat. So. so this book is called Earth. It is an older book, too. 
And it just goes into what we believe about Earth. And then it also has some interesting things like Cleopatra's needle. Um, that's, uh, it's like this obelisk, it's granite. I could show you the pictures because you can actually see the hieroglyphs in it. But um, I don't think I could, I could get the, the book close enough to you to do it. I don't know why this book has had such a hard life, to be honest with you. But I love this book. I really do. And I really love uh, collecting uh, informational and reference books because I like to compare how science changes over time, how words change and language change over time um, or remain the same, especially in the sciences and language because we treat those things as so uh, permanent, even though they're ever moving and um, forever disagreeing uh, with the older beliefs and uh, customs. So I don't know, it's fascinating to me, y'all, to me. This book is Oscar and Lucinda. I actually haven't read this book yet, but um, because I love an old book and because the outside of this book reminds me of uh, weaved paper, it feels really good. I'm very tactile. I told you guys like my favorite sense is touch and then after touch is smell. So those are like my two pet senses. So this book was purchased simply because like it like the 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 cover is made of like a weave it's like a fabric cover it's literally fabric it's so interesting and so but I haven't read the book yet Okay this book is called The Privileged Planet um so let me tell you what it's about cuz it's a little hard to uh describe is Earth merely an insignificant speck in a vast and meaningless universe? On the contrary, the privileged, uh, the privileged planet, how our place in the cosmos is designed for discovery, shows that this cherished assumption of materialism is dead wrong. Earth is far more significant than virtually anyone has realized. Contrary to the scientific orthodoxy, it is not an average planet around an ordinary star in an unremarkable part of the Milky Way. In this provocative book, why does his name have to be, uh, some words I can't say. I can hear his name in my mind, but I can never pronounce it. So I'm sorry to the author. Um, anyway, whatever his name is and Jay Richards um, present a staggering array of evidence that exposes the hollowness of this modern dogma. So it challenges the Big Bang and all that evolution. They demonstrate that our planet is exquisitely fit, not only to support life, but also to give us the best view of the universe, as if Earth were designed for both life and scientific discovery. Readers are taken on a scientific odyssey from a history of tectonic plates to the wonders of water and solar eclipses, to our location in the Milky Way, to the laws that govern the universe and to the beginning of cosmic time. In the privileged planet, you will discover why the best scientific evidence refutes the misnamed Copernician principle. Copernician, sorry, principle. The widely held idea that there is nothing special about Earth or its place in the universe. Why the sheer number and size of the galaxies does not mean that Earth's capacity to sustain, to sustain life is the result of blind chance. I realize I must have a speech impediment of some kind for my S's. How Earth is precisely positioned in the Milky Way not only for life, but also to allow us to find the greatest mysteries of the universe. Striking ways in which water doesn't behave like most other liquids and how each of its quirks makes it perfectly suited for the existence of creatures like us. The harmony of earth and the moon, how they work together to sustain earthly life as one intricate system 
and how that system produces the best solar eclipses where earthly observers can see them. How Jupiter and Saturn protect Earth from cataclysmic destruction. How the laws and constants that govern the universe must be narrowly fine-tuned for the existence of any complex life. The privileged planet's astounding findings should lead any individual to reevaluate entrenched assumptions about the universe and even to rediscover our very approach on what so many have dismissed as nothing more than an accident, an accident, an accident of cosmic evolution. So that is the privileged planet. I cannot say Mr. Gonzalez's first name, even though I can hear it in my mind. There are some words, you guys, I literally cannot say. It's, it's really sad. It's like I can hear them in my head, but like forming them with my mouth, I cannot do. Do you like watching book hauls? Are there book hauls? Do people do that? Oh, don't tell me that, Water Lily. I'll be watching book hauls. Okay. You can't come on to my channel and say that. One of you mods, um, can you, I really like you MBN Loaded, but I'm putting you on a timeout. Please don't talk badly about anybody on my channel, okay? I don't talk badly about people on my channel, so I would appreciate if y'all don't come here and talk badly about people on my channel, because that's not what I'm trying to do here. Like, this is not the beef channel. Like, you gotta go to another channel for beef. Please don't bring that to my channel. We are doing a book haul, y'all. This is the most sedate, unconfrontational, uncontroversial thing on earth. So chill the heck out up in here. Hi, Gab. You watch Shaka Zulu. I remember he said the sun. Shaka is the sun. Are there plenty of people that do book hauls? Why are you polluting me, Water Lily? Why are you testing me? <laughs> Don't have me up in here binging on book hauls, because I will. Oh, your mom does book hauls all the time? Real life class? No way. Okay, yeah. If your mom can read four books in the day, that's that one sitting on the couch over there. My daughter... She like devours books, devours them, literally does. Um, this is called The Guide to Modern English. This is an older book. So I have a couple of books here. Here's another one. It's called um, Manual of English Grammar and Composition. This, as you can tell, is an antique book. Um, but let me tell you something about this book that I really, really respect. Oh, it smells so good. Okay, so this is a very old book, so I'm gonna be careful with it. And it smells incredible, y'all. People, like I honestly have an issue. So this is not a super old book, but the reason why I like these old grammar books for teaching purposes and research purposes is because College level English used to be like grade school level English back in the day. Can you believe that? Like those little farmers, kids and stuff were learning like advanced English. And so we really dumbed it down for our kids. So this is the guide to modern English, but this one right here, this one is the jewel. Um, Manual of English Grammar and Com Composition. This is my baby and I love her and she smells incredible and she's very old. So even how words are defined are different. Okay, so imagine if you opened up a dictionary and looked up cumulative, right? By these one thought is simply added to another and both and not only, but also as well. He was both degraded and expelled. He, as well as you, is guilty. So 
I love that everything, like it's, there's nothing is simplified or dumbed down. Coordinating, which join sentences of coordinate, that is of equal rank or words that stand in the same relation to some other word in a sentence. Now listen, most people, like if you look now, everything is so simplified so that you can't, like this comes with the, the idea that the reader has a level of intelligence. And I feel like everything now is done at like a sixth grade level. So it's it go it's done with the the belief that people are stupid, right? Um, one thing I was told about my YouTube videos is people have short attention spans, so you have to make your videos three to five minutes long because people have a hard time sitting and paying attention for anything longer. And what does that say about us, people? Really, our attention spans are that short? That's crazy. Things have to be like simplified and condensed that much. It's that's insane to me. Oh, that's awesome, real life cast. Well, I'm glad I'm here and I am live. If you don't mind books, then you, you've come to the right place. You just want to hear me talk, you've come to the right place. Is the natural light better today? Because it hasn't been that good, y'all. It's been a real struggle. I wanted to do my video at my bookcase, but it was it was crazy. I'm so used to, you guys know in my old videos, I'm used to things being extra crisp, but out here it just is rainy and foresty and I have a billion windows and no light. That was the best book you read was by Dave Ramsey. You love money. Who wouldn't do well at book conventions? Why wouldn't I do well at book conventions, me? I might want all the books. Okay, so this one is called Refuting Compromise. Get this book. Um, a biblical and scientific refutation of progressive creationism, billions of years, as popular as popularized by astronomer Hugh Ross. So this was written by, well, the foreword was written by Douglas Kelly, PhD. The author is Jonathan Sarfati. He also wrote a book called um, Refuting Evolution and Refuting Evolution Two, which I need to get my hands on. Um, so this is Refuting Compromise, The Age of the Earth. We could have some fascinating discussions about the age of the earth. We really, really could. And I wouldn't mind having those discussions with you. As you guys know, I love to talk. I have two book piles going on here. I've got a four minute limit unless you get to listen while driving. That's so funny. I'm not a fan of books. My mom made me read them as punishment. Oh no, does she ruin books for you? That's wrong. And would make me write book reports on them. I can write a darn good paper, but I hate reading. Oh, I'm sorry, I should not laugh at your pain, real life cast, but that's crazy. Your mom sounds like she was pretty awesome. My mom used to make me sit and write my spelling words a hundred times each. So you know how I used to have to write them like five or 10 times each for school? She'd make me do them a hundred times each. Not five, not 10, a hundred times each. And I hated that. But you know what? It actually was really good for me. My mom was really strict and I hated a lot of things she did when I was young. And a lot of things she did weren't right, you know? But that part I actually came to appreciate. My daughter, I literally sat here, um, didn't I baby, and make you write your name a hundred times neatly in manuscript and a hundred times in cursive. Did I not? They can't hear you. Yes. Did you hear her say yes? I did. And she was mad. 
she cried. And I was like, there's no crying involved in this life. Just write it. So I think, you know, sometimes we're hard on our kids and moms don't do stuff right all the time. But there's some value to that. Like you said, you could write a mean report and girl, that's going to come in handy one day. You never know. But books as punishment. I wish my mom would have punished me with the book. Ben Carson's mom made him and his brother read books and turn off the TV. That's awesome. We all just need to turn off the TV in general, even if we don't pick up a book. I just realized we talked about butterflies and reading books. We are doing the reading rainbow. <laughs> oh man, but the reading rainbow came to my mind. I thought about trying to incorporate it in my, in my title. I love that show. That show was awesome. And y'all better not say anything different. Okay, so this is the book. Well, I don't know why this book is on my shelf. I really don't. But it's Investigating the Human Body. And this is definitely a book that's meant for my kids. But it like breaks down inside of a muscle. And um, just an educational book. You'll notice a lot of the books are informative. Because my children read these books. So... But I don't know how it ended up on that bookshelf, but it was on it. So there you go. Um, 50 physics ideas you really need to know. This is a cute book. What are we, what are we learning about me today, people? <laughs> what do these books say about my personality? I don't know. Because I know people think I'm all over the place. And I feel like all YouTube channels like have a gimmick, you know, like, I feel like, okay, I'm not going to mention anybody's name, but some people are like, you know, their whole gimmick is like attacking women. Some people are like, I'm Mother Earth. Some people are like, you know, I do shopping hauls. Um, everybody has like a gimmick. Some people are like, I'm a luxury blogger. I don't have a gimmick. Um, I'm just being myself and I guess I'm like all over the place like with my interests like somebody was critiquing that I did the Molestation video and the jokey video even though I'm always serious you guys um, over the uh, immigrant caravan and Oliver Like in the same day and they were like she's a scam and I was like no, like in real life, that's what I was inspired to do in the day, you know? And I was asking my man, I was like, babe, am I weird? And he was like, yes, yes, you are weird. And I was like, okay, thank you. So I guess my gimmick is being myself, right? So that's why I think my content is so varied. And I get passionate about things and then I fall out of passion with them, right? So during the Kavanaugh hearing, I was passionate about that. Um, like, and I, and so I was very deep into like that because I was so passionate about it. And then I made a couple of videos, um, like maybe four videos a row on black men. I did, one of them is private right now, but I did uh, FBI statistics, FBI statistics per capita, black, uh, fatherless uh, black homes. And then I did debunking the CDC report on black ma uh, male involvement. And I did those four videos in a row. And then, you know, like I get into bingy modes. I'm like one of those people, once I know I can do something, I move on. Do you know what I mean? So let's say if you're like um, Irene, like drawing, I, I draw really well. But I'm the sort of person that if I sit there and I'm like, will you pose for me for a portrait? And once I start drawing you and maybe get like half your face done and it looks super realistic, I won't finish the other half of your face. I'll be done with the, it's like, I'm satisfied that I could accomplish this. So I'll like move on. And that's probably not a great trait for everybody, but I don't mind that about myself. I think it makes me like a Jill of all trades, but a master of none. I don't know. So would you rather be a master of one trade or a jack of all trades? I wonder what you guys think. Yeah, the human body book is pretty interesting. And the pictures are very, very detailed. So it's really useful, too. I actually have a giant book. It's like a giant book 
of the human body as well. But I won't be showing that to you guys today. I like physical books. I actually wrote a, a article called Modern Day Book Burning, and it was about eBooks. And my argument was that eBooks are like a modern day book burning. And while I can understand eBooks because it likes to take a condensed version of a book somewhere and everybody doesn't want to carry a giant book, I particularly don't like the eBook phenomenon. It's actually provoked me to buy more books. It's like when they stopped printing encyclopedia, I ran out and tried to get all the encyclopedia I can, which is why I have several different kinds of encyclopedia in my house and many sets of encyclopedia. I'm actually after the last print of Britannica right now, it's an all black Britannica set, and I'm searching for that set because I want that set in my house. So I don't mind eBooks and I think that they're useful, but I don't, I don't like the trend. I would never want to see real books go out of print. Um, I would never want to see that. Let it, you're told you're weird and you can care less. I think weird, uh, I think weird is good. You know what I mean? I think that means you're an individual and I think that that's cool. So I like weird people, I'm with it. As long as you're not creepy weird, do you know what I mean? Like you can't be creepy weird. Not you, Lede, but I would just mean like, I like weird people, but I don't want you to be like, ooh, scary weird, you know? <laughs> I want you to be like fascinating weird. That's so different weird. Like, wow, I've never heard anything like that weird. Oh, do you agree with me about eBooks? Water Lily, you go both ways. I kind of like the tactile experience of touching a book. Do you know what I mean? You think books are for kids? Oh. So yeah, 50 uh, physics ideas. Let me just give you one of them that you really need to know. Hooke's Law is number seven. Derived originally from the stretching of springs and watches, Hooke's law shows how materials deform when forces are applied. Elastic materials stretch in proportion to the force. A, pro oh. A prolific contributor to architecture as well as science. It is strange that Robert Hooke is remembered only for this one law, but like its discoverer, Hooke's law crosses many disciplines, being used in engineering and construction as well as material sciences. And then it goes on to in depth describe Hooke's law and application of it. So yeah, 50 physics ideas you really need to know. I'm with it. Here we have the visual arts, a history. And, and this is what I'm talking about. Like, the visual arts of history basically only has European art in it. European and Egyptian. Like they're the only people that did art. If you go to museums, it's like that too, right? It's like European art, Egyptian art. Maybe they'll throw some Asian art in for good measure. But it's like Egypt was the only place in Africa that did art. Asia did a bunch of art and then Europe did all the other art. That's what it feels like, like every time I step into a museum, it's very frustrating. And then I have to try to kind of make that make sense to my daughters. Why do I tell you it's like that? Because most of the people- Wait, come closer to the mic so that they can hear you. Why? No, don't come over though. Because Europeans do most, because we live in a part of the world where Europeans are mostly yeah, so what art do they perpetuate? European? Basically, yeah. Mom, yeah. you know that we've been to a museum where there's Greek? Well, Greek, that's a type of European. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah, I have to, like, give that disclaimer every time we go to an art museum so that they literally don't think that the only art that exists is from Egypt, the you know, the pet African country of Europe and Europe. I need them to know like there's other art 
It's not just some random Japanese, you know, Japanese, Chinese art, and then European art, and then flipping Egypt. Um, this is Jane Eyre. I like Jane Eyre. This is a story that I like. <sighs> We're getting up here with the books. Okay, I have a whole stack of books on the floor. Oh, so these are, I do not know why my connection keeps dropping on my phone. That's like so crazy. So do you have frogs into princes? No, Ugh. no, 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 no. Babe, why don't I like Beauty and the Beast? Because of bestiality. Oh, wait, come back here. <laughs> Did y'all hear her? I'm telling you, I have real conversations with my kids. I don't play any games. Why don't I like Beauty and the Beast? Because of bestiality. What, is, what do you mean by that? Like, what is it about the story that has anything to do with bestiality? Because the beast turns into a prince and then, uh, marries Belle. Yeah. And she has to fall in love with an animal. Same thing with like a frog and a, a princess. Like, it's just weird to me. I don't like those stories. When um, Nyla was on here, we were talking about that. Like, I just don't get with those. And if I don't let my kids experience something or if I tell them I disapprove of something, I give them an honest answer as to why, because I want them to be able to see the deviancy in a lot of the stuff that's out there. I don't want to just I don't want to just say it and then think, oh, because my mom doesn't like it or because I want them to understand, like, there is a reason behind why I find this disgusting. And she remembers that because I, I like Beauty and the Beast. We can't do it. And so a frog and a prince, I can do that either. Like that is. Yuck. Either weird or odd. <laughs> That's good, though. That's not a bad thing, Water Lily. Well, Blur Monster, it's not about that. It's about the fact that Europeans went into Africa and Arabs went into Africa and they destroyed everything. They purposely destroyed whole cities. They purposely destroyed libraries. They purposely destroyed the the build, the buildings and the foundations, and they purposely destroyed all that so that it's not there. It's not even about Africans didn't save it. It's about they went and they demolished it all. So it's almost like it doesn't exist, but great things did exist there. It's just that other people came in and they just destroyed it all. And that's the history of the thing. Right. Oh, really, Water Lily? Yeah, yeah. That's how I I think of it, y'all. I the I I y'all don't even want to get into my brain because I get on some other stuff sometimes. So this is called the Great Liners and uh, the Pacific Navigators, and these books are all about boats and seafaring seafaring community, seafaring life, all of those kind of things. Um, for example, it has like an old roster, a passenger roster for one of the old steamship lines, just historical information, um, blueprints to old liners, things like that, just a lot of historical information. Don't ask me why I feel the need to hoard history, but I do. Like something in me is just like hoard history, Irene, hoard it, you know, hoard it while you still can. Okay, I think I told you that I had the military journal, right? I think I told you that. Okay, so this series, I'm not going to, I'm just going to tell you the titles of them all. We're not going to look at them all. These bad boys are um, science. So these are all science encyclopedia. Science is moving really fast, which is why I have lots of sets of science encyclopedias. Actually, I have another set. I won't pull all these up, but I have another set. Ugh. I guess I will pull them all up. Ugh. Wow, wait, wait, okay. 
Um, so I have many sets of science encyclopedia. Um, for various reasons. One, because science moves fast. Two, because I like to watch how it changes over time. This helps in a debate with people who like are very passionate about science and science is the truth and da da da. Well, I have several encyclopedias that say that science doesn't say it's the truth. Science doesn't even know what it wants to be. It's always moving and evolving based on the understanding of the time because science is only as good as our understanding at the time. And so often things that they believe are found to be wrong, even dangerous sometimes. So we have Macmillan's Encyclopedia of Science. And then we have, ah, 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 it's going, it's going. Oh, they tried to fall on me. You know, nothing is worse than a hardback book falling. That's like a book destroyed. So I'm like, cannot stand when they fall. I don't know. Blur Monster, I don't know about your conversation. I've been waffling between feelings about you and things you say, but I've decided to like you. So um, this one is the planet Earth, chemistry today. So over in this one, let me go through Macmillan first. It's like matter and energy, tools of tomorrow, communication, transportation, fuel and power, industry, the environment, body and health, plants and animals, life on earth, the earth and the heavens. This is the earth, chemistry today, physics, the heavens, men and women of science, which I think this is pretty timeless because this isn't going to change, right? We would only add to it. And it has information on scientists. Um, then it is the human body, the animal world, and the plant world. And so those are those. And then we come to the last three books I was willing to put off that bookshelf. And these are some older books. Um, this is Home University Library. And this is going over several, um, this particular, this particular volume is on Spain. So just this particular volume is on Spain and it's part of a larger set. And then we have this little book that I've never been willing to take out of its wrapping paper, but let me see if I can show you. I'm going to just unwrap it. This is an old Japanese book, so I'm going to put it back in its paper. If I can, hold on. If I can get it out safely. If I can't get it out safely, which I don't feel like I can, I won't. Yeah, I don't think I can get it out safely. So this is an old Japanese book. It's really beautiful. And obviously this is for the benefit of the only person in the house that can read Japanese. He's in Japan. We have a lot of books in foreign languages in this house, um, but a lot of them are stored because this house just simply wasn't big enough for all of our stuff. Okay, and this is, I don't know if this is my oldest book. I think it's one of my oldest books. This is a dictionary, um, and this book is, I'll tell you its published date. This book is, I just need a published date on you, baby. It's not on the first page. 
I like hate turning the pages in this book. Like it's like literally hundreds of years old. And so I like turning the pages just makes me sick. I love it, but like it makes me sick. I did a video on the Tumblr gender list and whether or not gender meant something different than sex. And I looked it up in this dictionary and I was like, strangely, hundreds of years ago. <laughs> gender and sex were the same thing. Hold on. Why can I not? Well done. Sorry, why am I so intently doing this? I'm trying to give you guys the exact age. It's around 250 years old, but I'm trying to find the print. Let's see, let me read it very carefully. Okay, so it says, so I always find this dictionary to be so funny because I'm telling you the way people talked back in the day was like crazy. And be unloaded. Okay, I will, I thought about doing book readings on my Patreon, but I have to ask my patrons what they think of it. I don't know that I would do a whole nother channel. I could barely deal with this channel. But I'm gonna need you to stop talking crap about people on my channel and be unloaded. It's a good idea, but can you share your ideas without insulting anybody? Okay, anyway. Let me read you what the beginning of this book says, and then I'm gonna tell you a funny story about this book and something that tore my heart into pieces. It says, the Royal Standard English Dictionary. The words in, oh, I'm sorry, let me start over. <laughs> the Royal Standard English Dictionary, in which the words are not only rationally divided into syllables, accurately accented, and their part of speech properly distinguished, but likewise a key to this work, comprising the various sounds of vowels and the consonants denoted by typographical characters and illustrated by examples, which render it intelligible to the weakest capacity. <laughs> Why does it say that? It's like we've broken it down so much that even a stupid person can understand it. What dictionary starts out like that? I guess one that's 250 years old. That cracked me up the first time I wore, I read it. I was like literally in pieces. I was like, they were like, we've done this so meticulously and, and we've broken this down so well that you're, those of you with the weakest mental capacity, even you stupid people can understand it. I just found that flipping hilarious. Don't ask me why I'm so, so amused by it, but I am. It's super amusing to me. I'm amused. Okay, so with that said, I cannot see the chat because things are going crazy. People have become the new dictionary, apparently. So with that said, I'm gonna get out of here, you guys. That is bookshelf numero uno. What is it? What about a book? It's a book. Oh. My daughter drew a picture of a book and wrote the words a book on it. She's trolling me, my own child. That's crazy. Okay, you guys. So with that said, ending with my baby. Um, 
this dictionary cost more money than makes any kind of logical sense. And it was damaged because I was taking my bookshelves down. I had all my books off. I hit something. I literally ripped my toe open and all of my books were on the floor and I was unable to put them back on the shelf. Um, and my children damaged this book and my heart just broke into pieces. And ever since then, I've been like a crazy person whenever they get near any of my older books. Don't touch it. Like she's trying to now, she's trying me, but she's gonna try herself onto a timeout. Now, with that said, you guys, I'm so glad that you joined me. I know that this is a live that's not gonna appeal to every single person, but for me, I really love books and I'm gonna do the whole series and those of you who are into it, y'all can listen in. And those of you who are not into it, that's totally okay. Like I said, my personality is diverse. And so I feel like I have thousands of subscribers and I keep getting more subscribers, but strangely y'all all don't like the same thing. So I don't know what we're all doing here together. Like I try, like, like recently, I gained in the past like four days, I've gained like 200 more subscribers, right? 200, 250, something like that. Um, and my view count for my videos goes down, but I have high user engagement, right? I hear from you guys a lot. So I'm very confused how I keep getting more and more subscribers, but my view count is down, but the longevity of how long people watch things is longer. So what I'm feeling is that some people gravitate to political videos. Some people gravitate toward the more serious videos. Some people gravitate toward the lives. So you know what I mean? Like some people gravitate like toward different things because nobody's leaving, right? The channel is still growing, but I don't know, maybe it's me. Maybe because I don't have a gimmick, maybe because my stuff is all over the place. Um, I don't know, but I don't know. We're just all gonna hang out together. We'll see what comes of it. Um, I will talk to all of you guys a little bit later. Oh, Virtuous One, are you still in the chat room? I don't know if Virtuous One is still in the chat room, but tomorrow I'm doing, I, I decided just to do it as a live, just cause it was easier on me to be honest, but I'm doing a live on home birth. So I feel like these two back to back are gonna be a lot for people. And then the day after that, I'm gonna do the male half of my child abuse um, in the black community. So it's gonna kind of go like that. Um, so that's pretty much where we're at with things. If you guys have other things that you're interested in, do let me know because you know, I don't have a plan for this. I just, as I feel inspired, do stuff. And that's pretty much how I work. And so um, that's why y'all never know what to expect. But do expect that I'll be putting up a, because I'm gonna honor my commitment and I'm gonna put up a sit down video today. It's going to be on because it was suggested and I'll give the person that suggested it credit, but I have to look again um, on why women look down on being with blue collar men because blue collar men often need a woman's help to financially support the household. And so I'm gonna do something on that um, as my sit down and uh, then I'll check y'all tomorrow. I haven't put up the contest for the day, but I'm gonna put that up. And I couldn't do my daily Bible, which broke my heart because I felt like, why are you touching things? My daughter just moved the camera. It broke my heart because I felt like um, I really wanted to be able to keep up with that. So what I've been doing is like a scripture a day. And I know we're all not Christian, but I hope y'all don't mind. So with that said, I'm out of here. Bye, you guys.